like to introduce the second lecture by Dima Sinapova on the three properties. Dima. Okay. So today I'm going to tell you guys about this theorem, recent result I mentioned yesterday, which is that starting from omega many super compact cardinals and a weakly compact above it, one can consistently get the three property at the first and second successor of a singular strong limit. I suppose there are omega many super compact cardinals and a weakly compact above them. Then we can get the tree property at kappa plus, kappa double plus for where kappa is a singular strong limit. And as I mentioned at the end of uh, yesterday's lecture, the key, uh, in, in the two key ingredients of the forcing construction is interleaving uh, the diagonal supercompact precree forcing into the Mitchell posset for the three properties. So key so let me say combine Mitchell forcing with the diagonal supercompact precre from uh, its size results with diagonal supercompact precre. So let me start by just mentioning some motivational you know, past results which have combined uh, in different forms Mitchell's forcing with uh, pre -cre type forcing, so some relevant first results, which I haven't already mentioned. Was there a question? Okay, so one, the first one is due to Cummings and Foreman. So in the same paper that they show that the three property at all of, all of the elephants for n greater than one is consistent. They also show that from omega many, uh, uh, that uh, from one can get from a super compact, the three property at the second successor of a string singular strong limit. So TP at kappa double plus where kappa is singular strong limit and they use um, so a Mitchell type posset and within the Mitchell posset they use pre forcing to singularize kappa. Now so a quick note in their model the three property at kappa plus doesn't hold actually one can show that in their model weak square at kappa plus at kappa holds but then Replacing a more standard precre with the Gittig Charon style diagonal supercompact precre can yield, yield the following results. So, this is due by Spencer Unger. I, I think it was published in uh, 2013, but the result itself was a couple of years before that. That one can get the three property at the double successor of a singular strong limit kappa together with failure of weak square at kappa. So again, kappa here, singular strong limit. And in order to even hope to get the three property, one better get failure of weak square. 
Okay, so both of these used uh, Mitchell style with uh, super com uh, this with uh, more normal Precre uh, and uh, Spencer's result with uh, Gitik Sharon Precre forcing. Now, if instead of the Gitik Sharon Precre forcing, one puts in um, Itai's diagonal Precre, then as I'll tell you today, we can show that the tree property is obtained at both first and second successor. So, okay. So now, let me do, before I start talking about you know, my uh, forcing construction, let me do a, a brief warm up to remind you guys about the Mitchell process. Just, you know, uh, classical Mitchell process to get the tree property at omega 2. Well, what happens there? So the picture is the following. We have our weakly compact cardinal lambda. <coughs> Let's say this is omega 1, say this is omega. So note by uh, that result by Specker that I mentioned yesterday, CH implies that the tree property would fail at omega 2. So one of the things that has to be done uh, in order to hope to get the tree property is to uh, uh, violate CH. So for example, one of the things that needs to be done is to add omega many, uh, add lambda many reals. So the Mitchell process, let me first tell you what it does before I write down the definition briefly. It adds, so it makes 2 to the omega equal lambda and also makes lambda equal L of 2 while preserving omega 1. So preserves omega 1. So the idea is to uh, blow up the power set of omega while simultaneously collapse all those cardinals here to omega 1. And the forcing is, uh, has two components, A, R, where A is, well, in the current poset, add uh, omega lambda. So this is uh, denotes the poset to add uh, lambda many subsets of omega. Now, what about R? Well, R has, so it's a partial function, it has domain a subset of lambda. Uh, so size less than or equal to omega. And for each, let me write it like that, for each alpha in the domain of R, we have that R of alpha is um, a name for a condition in uh, the poset to add one con subset of omega 1 as understood by this poset at, let me call this A, A restricted to alpha. So if one takes a generic for this, if you restrict yourself to you know, any of the alphas between uh, lambda and omega 1, this will induce a generic for um, this poset iteration, so followed by this, which will collapse alpha to omega 1. So lambda will become the successor of omega 1. Now, how do we know that omega 1 is preserved? And after that, how do we know that the tree property holds? Well, I haven't given you the order yet. Let me give you the order. So A prime, R prime, is less than or equal to uh, to A R if, well, the first coordinate is what? No. The only thing it could be, so A prime is extends A in the add poset, and we have that the domain 
of R is a subset of domain of R prime. And for every alpha in domain of R, A prime forces that R prime of alpha is stronger than extends R of alpha. So it's kind of like this you know, interesting way in which the two coordinates interact with each other. So this posit in itself you know, has terrible closure, but a key fact in Mitchell's uh, proof is that one can define um, a nice a closed posit which projects, uh, well, uh, a product posit which projects to the Mitchell one as follows. So note that if so let M star be so similar to this with same underlying set, but changing the order as follows. So the order for M star is A prime R prime is stronger than M star a R if so this is the same, this is the same, but here in the third item, instead of A prime, we take one. Okay. So this removes the interaction between the two coordinates. Uh, so if A prime less than or equal to A, and for every alpha in the domain of R, which is a subset of domain of R prime, it's forced by the anti condition that R prime of alpha is stronger than R of alpha. Okay. So by removing this interaction, this posit M star now can be presented as, just write it and then I'll pull the board up, M star is just add omega lambda time, so product, something I'll call Q, which now this is countably closed. And moreover, it turns out that M star projects to M. So this is a key point in Mitchell's construction which makes everything work. Uh, I mean that uh, a generic for M star induces a generic for M. Or I mean you can define an actual projection. So actually the projection is witnessed uh, by the identity. So if you take the identity, then you have uh, its order preserving. Because certainly if, I mean what's the difference is uh, the order for M star is slightly stronger. That one has to force. So it's order preserving and by playing around with the names, you can show that it's a projection in like the usual. Okay, so any questions about this? Before I put in the prick in it. Okay, so, okay. Now that we have uh, like this, uh, just the basic building block, block the Mitchell's posit, well let's me tell you what the forcing posit uh, in this, in our case, will be. Okay, so now. Uh, mm -hmm. For the Mitchell forcing, what does that do for you? Does that give you the, the tree property or? Yeah, so this gives you the, this makes, okay, makes uh, lambda equal L of two and gives you the tree property at L of two. Mm -hmm. And the way this happens is uh, using the fact that you know you started with a weakly compact lambda, and uh, that a certain quotient is very nice, which I'm going to talk more about quotients in a little bit. Okay. So now, what is our picture? Well. You write the several relevant kinds. So we have, uh, uh, so the assumptions of the theorem is we start with omega many supercompact cardinals. So let kappa denote kappa zero, and then I have kappa n. 
Um, I'm going to call their supremum kappa omega. Then let mu be the successor of the supremum. And let lambda be the weakly compact cardinal above it. So kappa will play the role of omega here. Uh, mu will play the role of omega 1 here. And lambda will play the role with lambda. So um, and here in V, where each kappa n, we arrange it to be indestructibly super compact, not just super compact. OK, so as before, before, uh, uh, before defining the poset, let me write down what the tasks of this poset are. So what we want to do, OK. I'm going to define a uh, forcing R, which R will do the following thing. So make, as before, so remember, kappa plays the role of what omega was there. So we want to make 2 to the kappa equal lambda. Now we also want to make lambda equal mu plus and preserve mu plus. I mean, preserve mu, I should say. So collapse everything between mu and lambda, just like the. We don't have a kappa. Hmm? We don't have a kappa. Yeah, kappa. Uh, I oh, called kappa oh, zero. Kappa. kappa. Sorry. Yeah. Um, preserve mu. So this uh, is what the Mitchell part will do. Now, what will the precre part do? So the precre part, just as. Uh, I mean, the precre part has to singularize every cardinal between kappa and kappa omega to have cofinality omega, and thereby <coughs> making kappa strong limit of cof omega and make mu be the successor of kappa. So this is what the precre part has to do. Uh, so this is done by Mitchell's, the Mitchell's part and by the precre part has to make cough kappa equal to omega and mu equal to kappa plus. OK, and then, very roughly speaking, how do we get so we get the three property at lambda, which will be the double successor of kappa using the so morally, the Mitchell component of the forcing will be responsible for that. And we want to get the tree property at mu, which is the first successor of kappa using uh, certain, so using the precre part plus uh, certain branch preservation arguments. Okay, so if I was giving a slight talk, overview of the proof, this will be it. <laughs> the key points. Okay, and now let me actually define what this forcing is. Now that we know what it has to do. Okay, definition. Okay, R. Well. So it will have three, uh, three components, you know. One will be the precre, and one will be the Cohen uh, component to add a subset of kappa, and one will be par a parallel of this R here. Okay. So conditions are of the form A um, P dot, I have to say. R, where so A is easy. A is in add kappa lambda, which let me call this poset just A. Mm -hmm. Now, using the fact that um, that kappa is indestructibly super compact, now that after forcing with uh, add kappa lambda, kappa remains super compact. 
so one has, uh, so we fix normal measures there, we can fix normal measures there, with respect to which to define the prick reinforcing. Hmm. In other words, in, so this is, uh, okay. Once of A will force that P dot is an element in, let me call the prick reposit I, where, uh, sorry, I'm going to write this here. So, um, where I is the diagonal pre used as in its ice result, which is um, what I talked about uh, at the end of last time. This, so this is diagonal pre cre forcing. Just to recall briefly, this was the forcing using normal measures un for n less than omega on the p kappa kappa n's, and add the generic sequence xn n less than omega, each xn in here, which singularizes the whole interval. Uh, all right, then now what about R? Well, the domain of R, just like here, subset of lambda. Well, what's the support? I recall, uh, mu plays the part of omega 1. So the support here is less than mu. And Every R alpha will be responsible for, you know, having partial information about how to collapse alpha to mu. For every alpha in the domain of R, we have that R alpha is a name that's forced to be in adding one coin posit of mu, but now name according to whom. So here the name was just, because of, we only have one first component, just taking add restricted to alpha. Well, here we have to take add star the pre restricted to alpha. This will, so the empty condition of that posit will force that R of um, alpha is in add mu 1. So what, uh, what does this restriction mean? Yeah. yeah. So what does this restriction mean? Yeah, so that's what I'm going to say next. So what do I mean by this restriction? Well, and this is uh, a non- so it takes an argument to see this, and uh, it first appeared in the cummings forman paper, and I believe also in Unger's paper. It's uh, outlined in one form or another. So one can show, so this is, let me do a lemma. For many, and by, many model, and by many I mean with respect to, say, the weakly compact filter on lambda. For many model alphas less than lambda, one can show that if that the name which of the normal measure, so this name, suppose those UNs are add names for the normal measures, that this, when you restrict them to the measure one sets of the model by at kappa alpha, project, uh, the pre-reforcing will project. Um, no. uh, you, the A, um, names for the normal measures will project to um, a restricted to alpha names 
for those normal measures. To be more precise, if you fix, um, okay, um, so what do I mean by that? I mean that if you have at kappa alpha and above it you had at kappa lambda, so you can define normal measures in the extension by at kappa lambda and also normal measures in the extension by at kappa alpha such that the precre with respect to those measures, the one upstairs will project to the one downstairs. And this follows part, uh, by, uh, well, characterization of genericity due to Matthias, of precre forcings that something is a generic sequence if and only if it meets every measure one set on a tail end. So if you meet all the measure one sets of the extension by at kappa lambda, you will meet all the measure one sets in an intermediate model. That's how one can show that I will project to I restricted to at kappa alpha. And it, the actual is actually more technical and more involved than that, but this is all I want to say here. And uh, it's written in detail, I think, for example, in the cummings forman paper. The, that's where it appears first. Okay, James is working. Okay. Um, does that answer the question? Okay. Uh, this, uh, all right, and then what we want. Okay, so now the interesting part, the order. So this is you know, the definition of the pulse. So three components, you know, add, pre -cre and uh, what, I used, what I call term forcing are. Okay, so the way, uh, since the orders are, um, So orders, and I'll be defining several orders uh, similar to the Mitchell case. So A prime um, P dot prime R prime is less than or equals of R A P dot R if um, one, well, a prime P prime is less than or equal A P with respect to at star pre -cre, at star R to domain of R prime extends domain of R and three if for every alpha in the domain of R, well, we have that this uh, interesting restriction A prime P dot prime up to alpha will force that R prime of alpha is stronger than R of alpha. Yes. Yeah, so for many more, let's always uh, work with those cardinals. And technically, that restriction is defined often enough, but if you think in terms of Boolean algebras, it's defined always. So let's just. So, I mean, this is very Mitchell-esque, right? Okay, so, all right, so this is one order. Well, now, let me define you what about, we can change the third condition, just like it was changed in the case of M star. Well, instead of restricted to alpha, I can just, we can just take the empty condition. So, let me define another order with the same underlying set, less than or equal R sub star where one and two are the same, so one and two are the same, 
the only difference is that in three we have that you know one forces well in in the right faucet so a star i restricted to alpha forces that r prime alpha is stronger than r of alpha okay so what do we have now Just as in the Mitchell case, R star projects to R. R star can be uh, represented as uh, a product forcing where one component is at star precre and the other component is a closed forcing because once in item three you require that the, uh, the empty condition forces uh, R prime of alpha extends R of alpha, you remove the relationship, uh, the interaction between the coordinates. So then you can view the last uh, component of the conditions as standing on its own. And that is close because those R of alphas are in the posit add mu one. Okay. So some properties. And this has all been. Um, it's straightforward what I'm going to write now, and it has been known. It uh, follows from arguments both in uh, James and Matt's paper or in Spencer's uh, papers. We have that R star can be written as at, yeah, followed by precre, and then times a forcing which I'll call Q. So Q has the underlying set R and the order given in item three, okay? And this forcing is mu closed. Okay. Again, one can show that R star projects to R. Um, what about also R projects to add star uh, precre? So, and um, one can show, and uh, this is, it actually follows from Spencer's results that, so this was already, um, that the tree property, okay, so if in in a little bit, I'll actually denote generics, Gs, and the like. But for now, let me say in V extension by R, lambda becomes kappa double plus <coughs> and mu plus. So kappa is singularized. This is due to the precre part. Um, everything between uh, kappa omega is collapsed to kappa. And this is my picture. So mu does become the successor of kappa, lambda becomes the successor of mu because all of these guys are collapsed by the R. And we do know that the tree property holds at lambda. Okay, so this was in one form or another kind of known. Um, yes, kappa is strong limit. Okay. Uh, what else from the basic properties do I want to say? Oh, and then there's one observation. I mean, uh, I guess it's uh, also due to Spencer that using uh, a Tice's theorem, one can show that in the R star, the tree property holds at mu, so, which is destined to become the successor, which is you know, the successor of kappa. So, but this is in the outer model, vr star, 
and go. And okay, so we have this. So I mean, just looking at those uh, items, one can say, okay, well, oh, we need some sort of a branch preservation lemma to get so. If there is a tree in the R, there is a branch by size arguments in this outer model R star. Let's analyze the quotient, and there are plenty of branch preservation lemmas uh, at our fingertips. I mean, one can do the Magidor Shala type of splitting or Silver type of splitting, etc. The one problem, the main obstacle for um, getting it, uh, the tree property at mu in the R, has been that the quotient R star mod R is uh, the opposite of nice. So one problem, so ma the main problem really has been in my, all my time of working on this problem is that the quotient R star mod R is, you know, really not nice, not amenable to any of those branch preservation type lemmas. Yeah. Because usually for the, I mean, for those preservation type lemmas, one needs to have some closure, but this is, you know, not closed in any way. And so how do we deal with this? Well, it turns out, well, the, you know, if you something is not nice and you don't want to deal with it, well, let's just avoid it. So it turns out that one can build a lot of other intermediate models between R and R star. So this is the idea of the proof that I'll you know, uh, outline in whatever time I have left. The idea is to define intermediate models between R and R star use branch preservation lemmas to get the branch to be in those intermediate models. And then show that as a whole, they approximate the main model closely enough that you can actually define the branch in the main model. So any branch preservation lemma can be done without having to analyze this not nice quotient. So this in a nutshell. And so what are those intermediate nice models of fix? A name, a precre name, uh, so an add name Q for a precre condition for an element in I. Okay. And we define with same underlying set. But a new order, and the order is, I'll call it, less than R sub, you know, Q dot, to be such that, again, we keep items one and two. But in item three, we don't take one, we don't take this, but we take A prime Q dot restricted to alpha forces that R of al R prime of alpha is stronger than R of alpha. So we keep some interaction between the coordinates. Namely, we keep uh, the interaction from the Cohen part, but we remove the interaction from the precre part by just fixing this um, Q dot. And also the universe, so that you maintain the conditions that are? No, the underlying set is the same. So again, two conditions. So this is fixed. That's why it's fixed. The underlying side is the same. A prime, P prime, R prime is stronger than APR if this holds, this holds. And for every alpha in domain of R, A prime Q dot restricted to R forces this. So. Not all you require this P and P prime stronger than. Well, in our, yes, uh, well, you can, uh, you don't have to require it, but if you want to uh, show that R Q dot projects to R, it will have to be R below. I mean, I'll write this down, but this can actually be defined ad hoc like that. Okay, um, okay and now, okay, so let me. Oh, 
Now, by the way, for the rest of the time, I mean, we are just concerned about showing the tree property at the first successor because everything else you know, has been done. So now, what are the what is the picture, the models, and the picture that we have? We have the following. Um, so first, so as before, R star can be written as the product A times I. and some forcing Q. Okay. Now, what about R sub Q dot? Well, R sub Q dot can be written as this interesting thing. A star, I mean, we need the A. There is no way to write it as a product uh, where the second component is independent of A, because we do keep the interaction with the first coordinate, but here we have i dot n times another forcing, which I'm going to call, uh, I guess, q sub. Uh, that's not a nice notation, but anyway, q sub q dot. Uh, where, so as before, in the r star case, now that this last component, this is new closed. Now, in this intermediate model, this last component is it's no longer mu closed because we do keep interaction of the first coordinate, but it is kappa closed because we've removed the interaction with the pre preposit, which is not even countably closed. Namely, if you just look at this condition three, it is kappa closed because we just have to worry about closing off that those a primes, that's kappa closed. Uh, R of alpha is forced to be in a posit with good enough closure, and the pre pre coordinate is fixed, so that doesn't change when you take a decreasing sequence. So this is kappa closed. Okay. And moreover, we do have that R star projects to R Q sub dot. And um, a projection is witnessed, for example, by the identity, which is order preserving. And it's projection in the sense that for any condition in here, any condition in here can be expanded with respect to this order to a condition <coughs> that's also stronger than this, you know, the usual diagram. So a generic for R star gives a generic for R Q dot. And unlike the quotient R star mod R, this quotient is nice because I mean, you can mod it both of them by, R, by add, and then you have the, you know, the pre pre part. It's kind of the same. You can mod out by it. And then you have one uh, closed forcing over another. So that's a nice quotient. Much more amenable to branch preservation lemmas than the uh, R star mod R. OK, and now also this projects to R, but with, uh, as Moti mentioned, with one caveat. We have to take R below a, condi below a condition whose uh, pre pre generic will, will contain Q. Dot. So below, say, 1, Q dot 1. So if you restrict yourself, yourself to all uh, elements below this triple. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the moral of the story is that R star mod R Q dot is, you know, is nice. And we'll be using this quotient to do branch preservation levels. Right. Um, so now, um, P of U. Hmm? What will be of U? That's according to the name of the tree. Yeah. So the branch lemma that I need will actually uh, look at. So for a given stem, it will look at all conditions with that stem. So I'm, for the proof, one needs more than just a branch preservation lemma for each one of these, but I need one for all of them simultaneously, but I'll, I'll get to it. Um, let me just say right now that this quotient is nice. So, 
Uh, next, I want to say how these generics for these models will approximate R. Maybe this will partly answer uh, Moti's question. So now, let okay, let G be R generic. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So let G be R generic. Uh, so let script A star I B at star you know I dot generic induced by G. Okay. So far so okay. Now for every Q in the pre generic I, let GQ um, no, before that let me say let G star be R star mod G generic and in a second I'll also draw a picture R star mod G generic and for every Q in I let GQ be R Q generic induced by G star and the picture is the following. It's always exists because uh, we said that R star projects to RQ only. Uh, no, R star always projects to RQ. Oh, RQ projects to R below, but that's why it, uh, we take for Q in the generic for the precre. Uh -huh. okay. okay. So the picture is. Oh, maybe I should keep the order. Oh, no, get rid of this. So the picture is, so here we have DG star. We have things DGQ for all Q, for every Q in this generic guy. So there are, you know, many models here like that. Okay. Because those Qs were taken from I, you know, each of these models projects to VG. And some wrong pictures, I might as well say, oh, VG projects to V A followed by I, which projects to V script A, where I didn't say, but script A is generic for add. Okay. And this quotient is a nice one. Why? Because V um, so GQ, that's um, R, uh, so G star, that's R star, which is A star I times Q. So in particular, this projects to V A. Let me call this script Q, where script Q is generic for uh, mass BBQ. I take away the prickly part. And this VQ projects to V uh, A times, so no, no, not times, uh, star. Uh, oh no, this is Q. Uh, script. Uh, so uh, Q says Q, I should have used P, I guess. Maybe I should use P. Q of P where you know, script Q of P is generic for the appropriate defined faucet taking uh, the third coordinate with this order and working in V A. So mm -hmm. oh yeah, so it's the quotient for this uh, generic for uh, this uh, faucet in line two of that phase, of that 
board. Okay? So now, and this is what kind of use the interaction between those two models to work with our branch lemmas. And the following observation, ready to the next lemma, maybe here. When I said that those uh, models, intermod intermediate models, approximate the main model, well, it turns out that actually G, the generic, is the union of G, P for P in I. Hmm. Why? Well, so proof, I mean, it's a density argument, kind of playing around with the name. So given, so I mean, the, this, this uh, direction certainly follows because the pro all those projections are witnessed by the identity. For the other direction, given, so fix some condition, some triple S in G, we want to show that S is in one of those GPs. Well, let's take the set D to be the set of all S prime such that, and here, I mean, it's the same underlying set, but I want to specify R star mod G such that there exists P in I S prime is less than or equal with respect to R sub P of S. This is dense, but with respect to which order? With respect to the order R star mod G. And it's a nice exercise in uh, names and orderings. And once you show that this is dense, OK, so intersects G star. And then, but by upwards closure, that, uh, it, so if uh, we take some S prime in D intersection G star, well, that S prime has to also be in GP, and by upwards closure, S is in GP. Okay. okay, so I have, I guess, five minutes. Maybe I'll write down the statement of the splitting lemma that makes it all together and uh, talk about it a little more in the beginning of tomorrow's section. <coughs> So this is that with respect to R star over G. You take S prime now, which is in D intersect with this. I mean, uh, it's a, yeah, it's kind of an exercise. Uh, yes, but your name, mm -hmm. you know, there are so many generics I'd like to understand this exercise. So D intersects with what? Oh, okay. So you take some, uh, so suppose you take some S star, then because both S star and S are in G, so this is R star mod G, they have a common extension. You have that, you take that common extension with respect to R. And this common extension, the second coordinate, the pre coordinate of this common extension will be your P. I mean, it's a little bit more, one has to do a couple of extensions, but you use the fact that you're operating in R star mod G. So any condition in R star mod G will be compatible with S by a condition in G, and you take that pre -cre coordinate. Okay. Okay. So, I have my picture. Okay. Where is the picture? Okay, so now we are showing the tree property, so fix a tree yeah. in here. Right now, uh, by Kitai's arguments and the indestructibility of the kappa ends and the fact that Q is uh, close enough, one can get a branch in G star. So how do, maybe I'll just say something kind of more informally and then get more technical, or technical in a nice way, tomorrow. Uh, how does one pull those branches up to VG? Well, the idea is, well, suppose it's not. Let's, uh, let's look at all, all the values, all possible nodes that are forced to be in B. 
and show that you cannot end uh, split forever because if B is truly a new branch, if B was not in G, then you have the situation where you have some node U, you know, which is forced to be in the branch B by some nice quotient forcing, but then you can split it uh, to incompatible nodes U1 and U2 such that both are forced to be in B. And this is how the splitting arguments usually work. So here, since we want to restrict ourselves to this quotient, this is a nice quotient, there are several things we need to do. Yeah, first, not instead of work, uh, working with the tree itself, we want to work with a name. So this tree, T, one can define names in a way so that given the right generics projecting to each other, those names will have uh, interpretation the same object. And one can get, and this is why, although this is formally incorrect, uh, for now I'll just put T dot for both of these. So there is a name for this tree in both of these models, and one can define those names so that their interpretation will be the same if you take projecting generics. Similarly, there is um, okay, a name for this branch, B, in here. Now, this will be an I name. So, a pre free name. Okay. And we're going to do splitting between, so for this quotient, for this quotient, but uh, we're actually going to do, in, no, so this, uh, this picture is just uh, two splitting. Uh, we need a splitting that has size uh, kappa omega. So we actually need for each of these you know, ui, where i is less than kappa omega. So uh, similar th with the same flavor as the Maggie Darshala uh, paper, new splitting. And to get this new splitting, uh, and also this will be splitting for something I thought, and I'll define it well, just tomorrow uh, formally. But H splitting, that uh, means any splitting between U and uh, its node for uh, VAQ mod VAQP, where P has stem H. So the branch lemma will, will fix a stem H and will consider all possible conditions of that stem H. And in order to get simultaneous kappa omega splitting like this, um, I rely on the precise statement of what uh, was proven in Neiman's paper, which is how I ended last time's lecture, which was so not only do we know that we have this branch B here, but we know that we have this unbounded set mu and uh, of, of mu and pre preconditions p alpha alpha in j such that p alpha meet p beta forces that I mean those the notes he defines are comparable and each p alpha forces that you know your sequence of nodes u alpha is in your branch b and so using the fact that you have uh, you know those things simultaneously is how one gets this uh, splitting. And what else do I want to say now? OK, so the branch lemma will be that you cannot have H splitting forever for any given stem H. So for any given stem H, let alpha H be where the H splitting stops. Take the supremum of all such alphas. The number of stems is less than mu, so the supremum is less than mu. Take a node be, uh, above that supremum, and then whatever are the successors of this node will define your branch because there's no more any splitting. And this lemma tells you that if there is an R star mod R splitting, that there has to be an H splitting somewhere. In a nutshell. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sorry, I <laughs> went over time again. Right.
Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we, we can dance.